Hello, in this video, I'm going to tell you about the difference between brown fat and white fat or adipose tissue. I'll also talk about a few foods that you might be able to eat to increase your brown fat and decrease your white fat. Um, so brown fat and white fat, we're just talking about two types of adipose tissue, meaning fat tissue. Um, so to sum it up, white fat's the bad kind and brown fat is the good kind. And I'm going to explain why that is. So in white fat and white adipose tissue, we have large fat droplets compared to brown, we have small fat droplets. On white fat, we have way more cells in our tissue, whereas in brown fat, we have far fewer cells in our tissue. Uh, so brown fat is smaller, more condensed, whereas white fat is more big and fluffy, you could sort of think of it. Uh, white fat stores energy or calories, and it tries really hard to hold on to it. It doesn't want to let go of its stored energy, whereas brown fat is actually very busy. It's metabolically active. It's burning energy very readily, and it contributes significantly to our thermogenesis, so meaning our uh, production of heat to maintain our body temperature. Um, so some studies have actually shown that brown fat even burns the fat that's stored in our white fat. Um, so if we're trying to work off our white fat, so our, our stored fat in the places where we don't want it, um, when we're trying to work that off, having more brown fat or activating our brown fat is going to be really helpful because it will actually help you burn the fat that's stored in your white adipose tissue. So white adipose is pretty much inactive. It has a very low metabolic rate, um, meaning that it's not doing much. It's just kind of sitting there you know, storing more and more fat, depending on what you're feeding it. Uh, whereas brown adipose tissue is very metabolically active. Um, it's working hard, it's burning energy and producing heat to help keep your body warm. Uh, so brown fat is activated when the body is cold and also during exercise. So when you're feeling cold, but not necessarily so cold that you're shivering, but you're just kind of chilly and cold, your brown fat is activated so that it's burning energy to produce heat and keep your body warm and maintain your body temperature. And then also during exercise, uh, it's also active then where it's burning fat right from your white fat, uh, your white adipose tissue to help keep you warm and maintain that activity. Uh, so because... Um, mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. So that's where the energy metabolism is actually taking place in a cell. How many mitochondria are in a tissue is really telling about how metabolically active a tissue is. So white fat, which is not doing a whole lot, has very few mitochondria. It doesn't have very much need to produce energy. Um, whereas brown fat is very active. It's very busy. So we have a much higher density of mitochondria located in that tissue. Um, so having too much white fat increases risk of diseases like diabetes mellitus, heart disease, and so on. So we all know if we are obese or we have too much adipose tissue, uh, it leads to risk of all sorts of different conditions. But in that case, we are referring specifically to our white adipose tissue. Brown adipose tissue has the opposite effect. Um, so brown adipose, we can have as much as we want. It actually has protective effects and decreases risk of those same diseases. Um, white fat is located more superficially throughout the body. So that's the fat that you have like on your belly, on your thighs, your hips. It's the fat that's right underneath your skin, between your skin and the muscle that lies beneath. Um, whereas brown adipose tissue is located deeper throughout the body. So uh, we have some in our neck and shoulders, but it's also found near and around a lot of our different visceral organs, like around the kidneys and adrenals and near the heart inside the mediastinum. Um, white fat really isn't activated, so to speak, uh, whereas brown fat, it's busy. We can activate it and cause it to become more and more metabolically active. So it's activated by exposure to cold, uh, not so cold that you're shivering, but cold enough that you're just kind of chilly and your body has to work a little harder to keep you warm enough. So there are some <clears throat> foods and compounds in certain foods that have been suggested to increase our brown fat. Uh, so that means to develop new stores of brown fat or to activate our existing brown fat 
or to do what's called a browning of white fat. <laughs> so our white fat, our existing white fat, to some extent we can brown, meaning that we convert it from white fat into brown fat. Now, I wanna preface this by saying that what I have here on this slide and what I'm going to share with you, a lot of it is based on animal studies because there just haven't been enough human studies um, to really confirm all of these findings yet. So this is an active area of research and hopefully I'll have more to share with you sometime in the future. Um, so this is a good start and these are some things to consider, but just keep in mind that none of this is conclusive and a lot of this is what was found in animals and not necessarily humans. So just keep that in mind here. Um, so the first compound is capsaicin and then also other capsinoids. So capsaicin is the active component in hot peppers. It's what makes them spicy. And then capsinoids, is our, there are another class of compounds that are non-pungent types of red chilies. Um, so taking capsaicin uh, has been found to increase thermogenesis. So it makes sense because it's what makes things spicy. Um, so it makes sense that it would increase kind of the heat development inside your body. So it's been found to increase thermogenesis and enhance fat burning, and that's partly mediated by activation of brown fat. I have a hard time with this word, resveratrol. <laughs> I always have a hard time pronouncing that one. Uh, that's a compound that is found in mulberries, red wine, grapes, and peanuts. Um, and that one has been found to inhibit formation of white fat and promote formation of brown fat. So that is going in the direction that we want to go. Uh, now, I caution you here, just because that is found in red wine doesn't mean uh, that that's an excuse to go crazy on the red wine and, and drink red wine all day in the name of promoting more brown fat because you're still consuming alcohol and calories and that's still going to work against your goal of weight loss if that's what you're trying to do. Uh, curcumin, it's a compound in term turmeric. <laughs> uh, so if we take it in large enough doses, it can improve brown fat response to cold temperatures. So it'll activate more efficiently in response to cold and it increases conversion of white fat to brown fat. So the browning of white fat, essentially. Uh, green tea, that's an interesting one because caffeine for one has thermogenic properties. So anything with caffeine is going to help to some extent. Um, but it also contains other green tea specific compounds. So both. Uh, so thermogenic properties that promote brown fat and decreases white fat. Um, but the results of these studies have been controversial. Um, these have been studied in humans, uh, which is great. It's a big step up from some of the other animal studies. Um, but because of the populations that were studied in those human studies, there's debate about um, whether body composition, eating habits, and or ethnicity might influence the results that, that were found in those studies. So something to consider. Um, menthol. So menthol is like in peppermint. Um, so it induces a cold sensation. And since our brown fat responds to cold, it makes sense that something that causes us to feel cold like menthol could activate brown fat and browning of white fat. Um, so I, in different studies, it's applied in different ways. Like it could be applied topically to just give your body the feeling of cold. Um, but I think it's also ingested in certain other studies. And then finally, last on our list here, fish-derived omega-3 fatty acids have been found to contribute to brown fat formation and increase expression of several different genes in brown fat. All right, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.